this video is the second part of the video on the confirmation of progression process for PhD students. Hello, you're welcome to my channel. My name is Ayodhi Jumatliko and I'm a PhD student in Glasgow, Scotland. In this second part, we we'll focus on how to prepare for the interview of Mini Viva, how to prepare for the presentation, and general tips on how to prepare for the confirmation or progression process. Now we'll now move into the interview of Mini Viva. So you call it interview in your uni, call it Mini Viva in my uni. So what was the interview like? And yeah, what kind of questions did you get? Well, mine was a bit different, really. And I'm assuming because it was online. Because at the end of everything, I was still asking, okay, so when is the interview? And they're like, you're yeah, done. So most of the questions of the panel also came during the presentation session, I think. And that was really helpful. So yeah, because the questions, the questions went on for a bit. Which looking back now, they're really helpful questions. But it just felt like I was being overdrilled. And members of my panel just chipped in then and just asked their questions. So I didn't have to do another session separately, which I assume I would have done um, normally if it was um, in person. Yeah, because a couple of students in my unit have done theirs online. So they have that audience online, but they usually take them to a separate online meeting room again for their mini viva where there's not an audience. So I guess it's quite different. Who are the members of your panel during your interview? Um, so the chair was actually the, um, the members were members for the whole process. So they were the ones that actually evaluated the written reports, um, my interview, and also my presentation. So the chair was assistant dean of research for the school. The principal supervisor was also a member. So other members of my research team were able to come in, but then they were not members of the panel itself. There was an academic staff from um, the school that also had like relevant knowledge in the field. Then I also had an academic um, staff who is actually a discipline expert from another university that was also a part of the panel. Okay. So for me, my mini viva, like I said, was in a separate room. So for the mini viva, you have a panel. So the panel basically is made up of a moderator and an external examiner, somebody that is not within the supervisory team. So the supervisors would be there. So my supervisors were there. So I had three, I have three supervisors. So two of them were in the room. They didn't see anything. They were not allowed to ask me questions. But my main supervisor was acting as moderator and then the external examiner, another researcher within the uni, but not involved in my project was the one asking me questions. And so the questions were really around just allowing me to talk more about how I actually carried out things like my literature review, how I decided on a particular method and methodology, why I have not done other things or thought about other things in a different way. And basically how I prepared myself to understand challenging concepts early in, the, early in my PhD. So the, it was a nice discussion and under 20 minutes, I was done because I expected to take long because a lot of people that were doing their mini vivas or progression around that period had quite long mini vivas but mine was 20 minutes and it was a nice interesting discussion and i even got advice to publish my systematic review so it was a very nice discussion so it's it's quite nice to be able to compare uh experiences online versus face to face so i think i'll just come back now to the presentation and in general how did you prepare for the presentation so i can imagine that it was a very anxiety <laughs> reading period it was you probably were quite nervous and you know preparing for that big day and the thing is a lot of the time when we're preparing for our confirmation or progression process we're very anxious because it's like one big milestone that you have to achieve because you know you have to move from you know m few or maybe it's not m few you know you have to move from your first year to your second year you have to be confirmed as a PhD candidate so a lot of people are nervous and it's when you do it that you realize that okay I shouldn't have been that stressed out by this but how did you prepare for the actual presentation and that whole process um, so a couple of things that helped um, for me was actually looking at what was required so I looked at the guidelines and then I also tried to actually familiarize myself with the rubric because so, I really wanted to know um what the panel was going to be looking out for. So I looked at that in depth and just ensured that I had like um, my written report and also my presentation that was tailored in line with what they were actually looking out for. 
Also, I went through people's past written reports. So people, um, other PhD um, students in my unit, I went through their, and even the postdocs, I went through their written reports. I went through their presentation slides. And then I also tried to attend as many presentations as possible. So within my field, people that were in different fields I didn't even know anything about, I just actually attended as many as I could just to get familiarized with the process and just understand the way it was. Because as, yeah, as, as I said earlier, like I was... <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was like I don't think I ever want to do this like yes it was it, it felt really daunting so I just wanted to feel at ease with the process as much as possible then again I did a lot of practice I practiced by myself a lot I practiced with my supervisor and I remember the first time I had to practice with him like the feedback I got it just felt <laughs> so demoralizing <laughs> I just felt like it was it, looking back now it was very helpful but then Goodness. I died there just like I'm not doing anything again. <laughs> because it was really constructive, but then it was you know, I felt it. it was just that way. <laughs> but I was really able to, you know, go back and work on the things that I said. I also had a presentation like a postdoc that I just finished as. And um she also really gave me good feedback. Then I had with someone that was not in my field at all. So yeah, I'd done a speed did before, but then not in my field at all. And that was really helpful again to just get, gain that like outside perspective. And also just before I had my COC, there's a um, departmental presentation that we usually have. So I had my seminar, which was close to that time. So it was really, that was really good because I just got feedback from like the old department and all that. I think those things really helped me to um, get ready for the main day. Yeah. Yeah, for me, preparing to, so we... Um, you have the guidelines, you know, the word count limits, you know, that you need to do this. And in my unit, they always give um, workshops to prepare you for the process. Some people think, oh, it might not be necessary to attend, but it's actually very important to attend because they usually go through, like, what you need to do, talk about different um, things to avoid if you're preparing. And also, yeah, going through, like, people's past um, reports is also helpful. So why did you prepare was to see, okay, what is required? What do I need to include? And making sure that I understand what the process involves. So that way I was preparing and I always had it in mind that, okay, in the 9 to 12 month mark, I need to complete this process. So I was always working towards that and constantly building up my reports. Then we responded to the presentation. So because it was face-to-face -face and um, within my research group, we usually have opportunities to present. We have seminars where you can practice your presentation skills, practice presenting to your research group, which is almost like a safe space because I mean, people are trying to help you to be better. They're trying to really help you think through your work and present better. So I had the opportunity to do a presentation during a seminar about one to two months before my actual um, research degree confirmation. That's a confirmation process presentation. And during that um, presentation, just like you, I got feedback from my supervisor about my presentation skills. So I guess because I was really nervous, I was talking fast a lot and I wasn't um, pronouncing words properly. So the kind of feedback I got was, like, okay, the content was good, but you need to work on your pronunciation, your presentation skills, and basically just your pace. So it felt really awful at that moment, but I knew that she was trying to make me better. That was why she gave me that kind of feedback. So she told me to go to our graduate school consultant who kind of gives a one-on-one -on -one, um, consultation on how to improve presentation skills. So I did that and it was quite helpful and I got very nice strategies to help me on the main day. Such that when I gave my presentation on the main day, my spouse was like, okay, that was really good. Pace was good and that was really good. And so because it was also face-to-face -face, and because I knew that I would have an audience, so what I did was to familiarize myself with my actual room. So I knew which room I was going to do my presentation in. So I would go into the room. A week before I went into the room, I would um, try to present, make sure that the projector is working, set the lighting, everything, try and sit in different parts of the room, see what the audience is looking at, and just present, over-present, and over-present. And so that by the time it was the, end of the presentation, I was very prepared. And also... Also, attending other people's um, presentations. So when you have, I mean, PhD students at different stages of the journey who have done their own confirmation. So attending their presentations was also helpful to see, okay, how do they present? How do people ask questions? So that was really good. So it's, it's, it's quite a nice process, I guess, because like, just like you said, it's just a process to help you to progress and think through your work and know that okay you're really ready to move on to doctoral study so it's not really a process to try to sabotage you or to make you scared or try to kill you but yeah it's always nice to be prepared so now let's talk about now we've got submitted our reports we've done our presentation we've done our interview mini viva what 
at the possible outcomes of this confirmation or progression process? What happens to a student who goes through this process? Well, the first and of course the most favorable, favorable outcome is that you've been confirmed <laughs> and then you are free to go like so, free to continue your work. But there's also confirmed subject to conditions where you have about eight weeks to either make amendments to your written report or do specific tasks that you feel like you need to do to um, be able to be satisfactory. Then it's confirmation deferred. So in this condition, you actually have to do it all over again. You have to do your presentation all over again. At times, you may also have to do your written report all over again. Then the final part is the no, um, not confirmed, where you have to do a show course. So the show course is to even say, why exactly should we even give you an opportunity to come back and do it again? Now, for either the confirmation deferred or the not confirmed, if you do it again, you don't have an opportunity to do it at another time. So it's like a final, final, final. But the thing is, they are also able to give you an opportunity to say, uh, maybe you're able to go to do a master's by research instead of continuing into a PhD. So like the opportunity is also there. Yeah. So ours is quite similar to, so when you go through the process, there are different outcomes. So the first outcome, obviously, is you pass. So you're confirmed to move from MQ to PhD to PhD candidate. So now you're confirmed as a PhD candidate. The other outcome is you can ask a student to resubmit and that student is given a deadline of four weeks for full-time students and six weeks for part-time students. They need to make a revision to their reports and submit a new form for the process. And sometimes they may require them to come back and do another Viva exam, give a presentation, and all of that. So yeah, the process is quite similar in both of our universities. And the process, like we said, is just to help you to just think through your work. And if a student doesn't go through the process satisfactorily, they can tell the student to leave with an MPhil instead of continuing on to PhD study. So how soon do you know the outcome of your progression process? How soon do you know if you passed, if you moved on to the next stage? Uh, officially, it's within five working days, but I must say that the five working <laughs> days can feel like forever. So, like for me, um, shortly after I knew um, the report, I think it was the next day, and I also got some sort of feedback like at the end of that day, and also I had an idea that you know passed, but then I really wanted the official one, and getting it just felt like forever. And it was not funny at all to wait <laughs> till the next Monday because I did mine on a Monday, so to wait till the next Monday, it was not funny at all. It felt like the world was. For us, you know the outcome on the day of the exam. So in that room, they literally just tell you, oh, you passed. Uh, so for me, they just tell me, oh, you passed. And I'm like, oh, that's good. And But then later on, about a few weeks later, you get an official email from the research administrator with a letter saying, oh, you've officially moved and progressed from PhD student to PhD candidate and all the best with your doctoral studies. So yeah, it's quite similar. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm getting to the end of the video. So we've talked about so many things, talked about the whole process, how to prepare. So do you have any general tips for students? So somebody is watching now, probably thinking, oh, I need to prepare for this thing. What general tips will you provide for a student who is about to go through this process? Um, well, I'll take a couple of tips, actually. First is that as soon as you start your PhD, try and know the guidelines, like, Familiarize yourself with the guidelines at your school. Know what is um, the panel members are looking out for. Know the things I really need to include, and also know like the professional um, development sessions you have to take, just so you are prepared and ready for the process. Another one is attend as many people's um, presentations as you can, and also go through many people's written reports. Like as many written reports that you can get, go through the reports. Um, go through their slides, just be really familiar with the whole process. Then again, is that you try and have um, practice sessions with people that are in your field, with people that can actually give you good constructive feedback. Even if it be feedback that would make you mm -hmm. cry, but at least it will be constructive and help you through the process. So like, just go out. Actually, if you know that there's someone that, you know, tends to be fair at times, just go to that person and get good feedback um, for the process. Then again, is to also practice by yourself. Um, practice, practice, and practice by yourself. Yeah. Yeah, that's good advice. And yes, yeah, similar um, advice that I'll give is familiarize yourself early on when you start your PhD. Know what is required of you. 
familiarize yourself with all the documents, what is required at the 9 to 12 months, what do you need to include in your reports, what have other people done, can you ask for other reports, can you go through them, attend as many presentations in your university. So for us, they always send emails regularly, the student is going through their confirmation process, that, oh, this student is moving on to the next process, they are invited to their presentation, so you can go there, attend, you don't need a formal invite, just attend the presentation and understand what you need to do. And also, just like Tokwa said, practice, 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 practice your presentation. If you need extra support with writing or presentation skills training, don't feel ashamed and feel comfortable with seeking out those kind of support and go and get all the training that you need. And basically, just relax, be composed. I know that nobody is trying to make you feel. They're just trying to make you a stronger students, a stronger PhD researcher that will move on to the next stage and finally get a PhD. So yeah, so I guess that is all for this video. And thank you so much Tokwe for coming to share your tips and your general advice on how to prepare for the confirmation or progression process. Thank you also to our audience for watching up until this point. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you stay notified when I upload the next video. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye. Bye.